Well, welcome to another edition of Show and Tell at 42nd Street Pete's whatever here. And we got a bunch of lobby cards again. I went through some stuff and found more things. So here we go with El Condor with Jim Brown and Lee Van Cleef. And this was written by Larry Cohen and produced by Andre Dutooth and directed by John Gilliam. And why this isn't on Blu-ray is a mystery to me. The Last Hard Men with Charlton Heston and uh, James Coburn. This is a pretty rough, raw film. That's um, Barbara Hershey being choked out by uh, James there. I believe this is available on a Blu-ray. Uh, uh, actually, it's from Mill Creek, and it ain't that bad. You get Rio Conchos, Last Hard Men. Uh, the hell was the other one? Take a Hard Ride and some other film that I never fucking heard of. Uh other shot of El Condor blowing shit up. This is another good film. Haney Calder with uh, Robert Culp and Ernest Borgnine and Raquel Welch. And this is Christopher Lee's only Western. Diana Doors is in it. Struther Martin, Jack Elam. Uh, really good film. I think that's available now. Here's our... Orgy of the Living Dead. Three films uh, released through Europix International. Revenge of the Dead, Living Dead, Curse of the Living Dead, and Fangs of the Living Dead. It was something about somebody spending, well, I, that might come up later, spending time in a mental institution after seeing this. These are really weird because it's a still from the Cutthroats 9 from United International Pictures that stapled, on, stapled onto this cardboard, so it really isn't a lobby card, and I've seen this guy and a bunch of other shit, but don't know his name, but there's really no payoff scenes in these at all. I, it, it didn't make any sense. Um, like I said, showing nothing. Here's the prisoners in the wagon. Uh, pretty dull set, and you know, it's just weird that they made lobbies out of stills. The Unstoppable Man with uh, Cameron Mitchell and Lois Maxwell. Um, have no idea. Never saw this one. I know it's from 1961. I know Cameron was going overseas a lot to make pictures because uh, he had a little gambling problem. St. Ives. This was a good one, too. This was a little bit offbeat for Charles Bronson. He played this one a little bit laid back with John Houseman and... Uh, who the hell else was in this? Jacqueline Bissett, She Looked Great, Maximilian Snell. Uh, really pretty, pretty good film. Uh, you know, most of Bronson's films were straight up shoot 'em ups, but this one has a little bit more to it. Agent Eight and a Half. I don't know, or Eight and Three Quarters. Now, if you notice, this is taped over here, so I don't know what the other name of the film was. It's one of these British spy films. It was a shitload of them that came out in the 60s. This one's from 65. Ah, uh, yes, another film that nobody's ever fucking seen. Sadissimo. Every torture known to man filmed in the dark corners of our so-called civilized world. Well, this was narrated by Bert Topper and released by AIP in 67, so... And these, you know, these, these are nasty lobby cards. There's a couple different ones here. I'll find the other ones. Sugar Hill. I just watched this. I think I just... I just didn't I? Yeah, I just did a little presentation on this. Really good film. There's Don Pedro Cali wearing the overalls there. I don't know how to pronounce this. Quiet, Dan? Quiet. It, this is a classic uh, from 66. Um, Japanese uh, horror thing. I think it was an anthology of maybe three or four stories. Corruption with Peter Cushing and Sue Lyon. There's actually Peter in the lobby card for a change. This was from 68, I believe. Uh, one of my all-time favorite, Girls Are For Loving with Ginger. There was like three ginger flicks uh, put out that were all shot around um, New Jersey. And this is produced by Ralph T. Desiderio. And I went to school, a Catholic school, with somebody named Desiderio. And they had a car dealership, so I got a funny feeling it's the same people. Go figure. The Mad Executioners. 
This is another one where I remember the second feature and don't remember the main feature. This is a West German one that was pretty, pretty fucked up and it was released by Paramount, so whatever movie I can't remember also was released by Paramount around 65, 66. Here's one from 58. Revolt in the Big House with Timothy Angola Carey in the middle as Bugsy. Yeah. Timothy got a lot of screenplay there. Actually, the star was Eugene Evans and uh, Robert Blake actually uh, debuted in there as uh, some Mexican kid, I believe, or something. My dog's coming over here to bug me now. Uh, let's see what this one is. Bandito with Robert Mitchum, Ursula Cease, and Gilbert Rowland, also starring Zachary Scott. Anything with Mitch is good. This is not an original. This was given to me by Ben Chapman, who I used to smoke weed with at Chiller, who played one of the creatures. Ben Chapman played the other creature. Uh, I mean, uh, Rico Browning played the other creature, I'm sorry, and Ben played one creature. So Ben was always cool to hang out with. I miss him a lot, too. Here we go. From Cinemation, Jerry Gross. You remember Jerry Gross, I drink your blood, I eat your skin. Yeah, this is one of his uh, little exploitators that was basically rated X. Then we got Swedish Fly Girls. I'm trying to think who released this one. Uh, probably an import because all these names, Inger Stender, what is that, the knockoff e Inger Stevens or something? And the air hostess is from Copenhagen. How can you fucking go wrong for 1972? Something got stuck to the other one here. Grimm's Fairy Tales for Adults Only. When the hell did this come out? This is Rated X. This is another Jerry Gross uh, Cinemation one. Um, Jerry had a hate relationship with the MPAA, that's for sure. He did a lot of stuff to piss them off. Um... Released through American International, The Million Eyes of Sumeru, with Frankie Avalon as a spy and George Nader. This is a really weird-ass fucking movie. I think it's out on Blue Underground. It's a bunch of female assassins that take out guys. This was the first, I think, one of the first Hunter S. Thompson movies made, uh, starring Bill Murray as Doc Dr. Hunter S. Thompson. Really didn't do too well, I don't think, uh, with Peter Boyle. Um, got a couple like that. Uh, I don't think Hunter was too thrilled with this whole thing, to be honest with you. But some people liked the movie. I thought it was okay. I thought uh, the Las Vegas one, uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, was a lot better. Here's another one you don't see around anymore. It used to run on Channel 9 on Supernatural Theater. Macumba Love. Um, I think this was a Mike Ripps deal, too. From 1960. There's the snake on the grass. Of course, you know, you got to have weird shit. Um, I remember I met June Wilkinson. She was she was fantastic. Nice lady. More from Macumba. This is all voodoo stuff. Um, as a kid, I really didn't like it because there was no monsters. But I got a bunch of... Don't ask me where I got this from. Of course, you got to have the snake wrapped around the neck. And I guess this is, what's this guy's name? Walter Reed or William Wilm? I don't know, whatever, but it's a nonsense still. All right, it's hard to say which one of these is really the worst of the two movies. Um, Curse of the Voodoo, I think, was British, to be honest with you. Um, Frankenstein Meets the Space Monster was ours, released by Allied Artists. Um, I don't have any with Frankie, Frankie in it, though. Frankie was just a robot with no face, but this is the voodoo stuff. Uh, these are both out on DVD. And we're back to Sadissimo with the old dip the head in the boiling water trick. And burning out the eye trick. What a wonderful movie this I'm surprised nobody's dug this up. This is another lost ass film. And then from the 50s, uh, The Naked Jungle. Naked Amazon, rather. Um, again, Jerry Gross, time, Times Films. Um, Funny, in the 30s and 40s, they used to have the gorilla was the big boogeyman, and when you get into the 50s, it was fucking pythons and crocodiles and alligators and shit. Corridors of Blood, starring Boris Karloff and Christopher Lee. Um, you can see both of them in this, this scene. Um, I had this on 16 millimeter. There's Francis the Wolf there. Um, 
let's see. This is not actually a horror film. Uh, it's more of a, I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's almost like a documentary about how they got anesthesia back in the day, because that's what it all is, that um, basically the Boris Karloff character becomes addicted to the anesthesia and is signing death certificates for Christopher Lee, who's Resurrection Joe, and Francis the, the Wolf, who kills people. So, you know, here, here's Boris injecting somebody in a scene that really didn't work, and I think this is our last one. So uh, that's all my lobby cards for this uh, edition of the show, but we'll be back shortly with some other weird artifacts.